I'm Audrey. Princess Audrey? Sleeping Beauty's daughter. We don't mean to bother you, Sleeping Beauty, but we're a little concerned and confused. Your daughter Audrey nearly destroyed her enemies in Oridon in Descendants 3, but you were nowhere to be found. Your mom Leo was there, and she even patched things up with Mal. So we just want to know why you weren't by your daughter's bedside when Hades saved her life. Audrey could have used the support. We probably weren't the only ones who wanted to see Princess Aurora in Descendants 3. Luckily, Audrey's mom popped up in a popular TV series, so we finally know what she looks like and whether or not she looks like Audrey. Keep watching to see what the missing parents from Descendants 3 really look like. No. I don't hate my mother. Dizzy and Drizella Dizzy's grandmother, Lady Tremaine, might be a total villain, but her daughters Anastasia and Drizella aren't exactly the conniving type. They just do what they're told. We never catch a glimpse of Dizzy's mom in Descendants 2 and 3, but we do get to see her in Once Upon a Time. Funny enough, Anna Cathcart actually played the teenage version of Drizella on the show. Uma and Ursula Uma is one of our favorite VKs and she's the daughter of Ursula. While we don't get to see the sea witch in Descendants 2, we do catch a glimpse of her long tentacles. Son, you clown! Mom! These dishes ain't gonna wash themselves! We know that actress Whoopi Goldberg voiced Ursula in the Disney Channel movie. However, we get to see a better look at Ursula in Once Upon a Time. Chad, Cinderella, and Prince Charming In 2015, Disney released the live-action remake of Cinderella. Actress Lily James portrayed Cinderella, while actor Richard Madden played Prince Charming. This movie told the tale of how Cinderella and Charming fell in love. And thanks to the Descendants franchise, we know that they eventually had a son named Chad. Lonnie and Mulan Lonnie is a brave and talented fighter who never backs down from a fight, and she gets that from her warrior parents Mulan and Li Shang. The live-action remake of Mulan is hitting the big screen on March 25th, 2020, and we're super excited. We'll get to see the real-life version of Lonnie's mother, Mulan. Doug and Dopey Doug has got to be the nicest AK in Oridon. He never had a problem with the VKs attending Oridon prep. Hi guys, I'm Dopey Son, as in Dopey, Dog, Bashful, Happy, Grumpy, Sleepy. And he made everyone feel welcomed. He probably gets this from his dad, Dopey, who once risked everything by letting a stranger move into his home. We never get to see Doug's dad in the Descendants movies, but he does pop up in Once Upon a Time. Allie and Alice Allie is a character who doesn't appear in the actual Descendants movies. However, Allie is a popular AK when it comes to the animated short series Descendants Wicked World. We wish Allie could have made it into D3. It would have been super cool to see Allie and Alice standing side by side. Luckily, we know exactly what Alice looks like thanks to the live action Alice in Wonderland movies. Audrey, Aurora, and Philip. Much like Dizzy, we never get to see Audrey's parents in D3, but we do get to meet her grandmother. Our family status gone. Queen Leah is a real piece of work, but she starts to loosen up by the end of the three quill. We never get to see Princess Aurora or Prince Philip, which is a total bummer. But once again, we get to meet the younger versions of Audrey's parents in Once Upon a Time. Evie and the Evil Queen Evie and the Evil Queen might have their differences, but they connect over beauty and fashion. We get to see what Evie's mom looks like in the first Descendants film, but it's hard to see the resemblance. In Once Upon a Time, we get to meet a very different version of the Evil Queen. Actress Lana Perea portrays Evie's soon-to-be mother on the show. Ruby, Inkselin, and Rapunzel much like Ali, Ruby, and Inkselin don't appear throughout the Descendants franchise, but they are leading characters in the Descendants Wicked World miniseries. Rapunzel is one of the most adored Disney princesses of all time, so we would have loved to see her and her kids appear in Descendants 3. We know what Rapunzel looks like as a cartoon, and thanks to Once Upon a Time, we now know what she looks like in human form. Gil and Gaston Gil is the furthest thing away from being a villain. He just wants to make friends, go on adventures, and try some cool new foods. Furry rocks, giant fish. You're probably used to grabbing lunch off of a bush. But his dad Gaston isn't the chummy type. Gil hardly ever mentions his father, and after watching the 2017 live-action remake of Beauty and the Beast, we finally know why. Gaston is super pompous and self-involved. Jay and Jafar 
We know what Jafar looks like thanks to the Descendants franchise, but we were curious to see what he looked like when he was younger. Jay's dad can be seen in the 2019 live-action remake of Disney's Aladdin. He's portrayed by actor Marwan Kanzari. Mal and Maleficent in 2015, Kristen Chenoweth took the stage to portray Mal's mother, Maleficent, in the first Descendants film. It's all about you and me, baby. Do you enjoy watching innocent people suffer? But we haven't seen her since Mal transformed her into a lizard. But we get to see younger versions of Maleficent and Ursula battling it out on the episode of Once Upon a Time, Harry and Captain Hook. The cartoon version of Captain Hook was pretty evil and outdated. Thankfully, Once Upon a Time brought us a Captain Hook that does his son Harry a lot of justice. Both father and son are gifted in the looks department, and they're both a lot nicer than they pretend to be. Who is your favorite child parent duo? Tell us in the comments. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the baddest villain parent of them all? We've got some clues about the missing parents of the villain kids in the Disney Descendants movies. Watch until the end to find out which of the villain kids might actually be siblings. See, I'm just, just trying to teach you the thing that really counts. How to be me. The villains on the Isle of the Lost have certainly been busy since their banishment to that crowded chunk of land with no magic. In Descendants, they establish that the villain kids Mal, Evie, Jay, and Carlos are the children of Maleficent, the evil queen, Jafar, and Cruella de Vil, respectively. We know that they didn't exactly have a flair for a loving parenting. In fact, they're downright mean and selfish to their kids. Mal grows up being praised for things like backstabbing her best friends. Evie thinks she must flirt with and manipulate men to get what she wants. Jay is a thief and Carlos has an irrational phobia of dogs. Not exactly the best marks of good parenting. In the first movie, the villain parents tried to manipulate the villain kids into stealing Fairy Godmother's wand so they could destroy the barrier around the aisle. The barrier is broken! We're free! Thankfully for Oridon, Mal and her friends chose to be good. Maleficent didn't take the news very well. She took advantage of a breach in the barrier and escaped to Oridon, where she terrified everyone when she turned into a dragon. Unfortunately for Maleficent, she was magically transformed into a tiny lizard. In fact, all four of the transferred villain kids stood up to their parents and decided to stay in Oridon. All the villain kids seemed to be doing well without their parents. In fact, we haven't seen much of the villain parents since the first movie. But fans still have one major question about the villains on the aisle. Why are they all single parents? We've got some theories about the whereabouts of these missing parents. Mal's dad Everyone is pretty sure that Hades is Mal's dad, but we won't know for sure until Descendants 3 comes out. In the novel The Isle of the Lost, Mal's father is mentioned a few times. One thing Maleficent says about Mal's dad is that he's a pathetic little human. That doesn't really match up with the theory that Mal's dad is Hades. Hades isn't human. He's the lord of the underworld. But was he once human before? Whatever happened, it's clear that it didn't work out between Mal's dad and Maleficent. So that means Mal's only real role model was an angry, bitter, magicless sorceress with a singular mission of revenge. It's a wonder Mal turned out decent at all. So what happened to split up Mal's parents? Maybe there's only room for one narcissistic, selfish, cruel parent in the family. Can you imagine an argument between Hades and Maleficent? If they had access to their magic, they would have made their castle explode in a fiery display of blue and purple flames. One thing is certain, all the fans are excited to see Mal's reunion with her long-lost father. But if it is Hades, will he be on Mal's side? Or is he the one draining her magic? From the latest Hades trailer that Disney released, it's clear that Hades has a score to settle. He's bitter that he's been exiled to live out his days. To a crowded little island with no magic, no freedom, no hope. He wants to make the king and queen of Oridon pay for what they've done. Since the king and queen are the parents of Mal's boyfriend, that would put him at odds with Mal. And we know from the mystery trailer that Mal is trying to get her hands on Hades' ember. So this may not be the happy father-daughter reunion we've all been waiting for. Evie's dad. We know that Grimhilde, aka the evil queen, is the most beautiful and cruel queen on the isle. 
So who could Evie's dad possibly be? One fan believes it could be Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. When you think about it, that makes a lot of sense. He's vain like the evil queen. He wanted only the best, most beautiful woman in the land, but then Belle chose the Beast. Now, technically, Gaston fell off the castle at the end of Beauty and the Beast, but did he really meet his demise? According to the actor who voiced the character, the answer is no. In an interview, he shared that he is 100% certain that Gaston just had a bad fall. He thinks Gaston probably just got a nasty bump and may have forgotten himself for a while. Perhaps he has a bit of villain amnesia, but Richard White is convinced we'll see him again. But we're not totally convinced. After all, the animators did draw skulls in the pupils of his eyes, which is a pretty big indicator that he didn't survive the fall. That would make it impossible for him to be Evie's dad, and also that would make Evie and Gil half-brother and sister. Speaking of half-sisters, there's another fan theory that would turn Evie's bestie into her half-sister. This fan theory points to Hades as Evie's potential father. If he's also Mal's dad, that would make Mal and Evie half-sisters. If Hades dated both Maleficent and the Evil Queen, we doubt he would live to tell the tale. But maybe he was protected from their vengeance by being locked up. Another more feasible theory is that Evie's father is the Huntsman. You know, the guy who ran Snow White out into the woods in the animated film? However, he was supposed to bring the Queen Snow White's heart in a box, and he didn't do it. We can't imagine the Evil Queen letting him live that one down. Jay's mom. Jafar is among the other evil single parents on the aisle whose past is a bit of a mystery. Besides Jasmine, he never had a love interest. He seemed only interested in power and control. On the aisle, he's obsessed with finding the lamp with a genie inside so he can make his wishes come true. But who could Jay's mom actually be? One fan had quite an interesting theory about this. When you look at Jay, you can see that he's clever, charismatic, nimble, acrobatic, and a master thief. Hmm, that sounds like another character from a classic Disney movie. Aladdin and Jay are so much alike that it's spooky. In fact, Jay bears a closer resemblance to Aladdin than he does to Jafar. Additionally, Jafar talks about Jasmine on several occasions in the Descendants movie. Disney fans are like expert detectives. Many of them came to the conclusion that Jay might actually be the son of Aladdin and Jasmine, but that Jafar cast some sort of spell on them and stole Jay for himself. That way, he could have someone to do his bidding while he is stuck on the aisle. So maybe Jasmine and Aladdin are completely oblivious to the fact that they may have a son, and that he's been kidnapped and that he was stuck living out his days on the Isle of the Lost until Ben invited him and the rest of the VKs to Oridon. So will we be seeing more than one parent reunion in D3? We'll have to just wait and see. Really, Mom? Yes! Who would touch up my roots, fluff my fur, and scrape the bunions off my feet? Carlos. So Carlos's mom, Cruella Deville, is downright frightening. She's not only ruthless against people who get in her way, but she's also not exactly a friend to the canine world either. She views all living beings as there to serve her needs, including her own son. She made him sleep in her closet to protect her furs. She instilled a crippling, irrational fear of dogs in him from an early age. She makes him scrape the bunions off of her feet. Gross. She seems like the worst mother in the bunch. So who would want to marry and have a kid with this monstrous woman? Many fans have speculated that she could have hooked up with one of her henchmen, Jasper or Horace. Another fan has suggested King Candy from Wreck-It Ralph as the bad guy who stole Cruella's heart. But Carlos may never find out the truth about who his father really is. Cruella doesn't seem like the kind of mother who would sit her son down for a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Since it must get lonely on the aisle, there's a chance that Jafar and Cruella got together at some point. That would make Carlos and Jay half-brothers. That would explain their playful chemistry. They're constantly play-fighting and wrestling around. They definitely have that brotherly energy between them. But regardless of who Carlos's dad could be, it's clear that Cruella couldn't hold down a steady relationship. That's because she views others as only there to serve her. Not to mention, she keeps talking to that stuffed dog on her shoulder. And that is just weird. Celia We don't know much about Celia and her dad, Dr. Facilier, yet. In an interview at the Disney Fan Fest, Judah Marie shared that Celia is a daddy's girl. She also mentioned that she's all about the cash, just like her father. So it seems like they're pretty close. But who is Celia's mother? We would venture to say that Celia came to Dr. Facilier as part of a deal he made with an unsuspecting victim of his voodoo magic. He doesn't exactly deal fairly with people. So what if he sort of rumple-stillskinned his way into having a daughter of his own? That would make it hard to pin down her real parents. They could be anybody who got tricked by the great voodoo doctor. The only ones who know for sure are his friends on the other side.
Uma. Uma clearly takes after her mother Ursula. She's got the same sass, the same bad temper, and the same octopus morphing abilities. It's gotta be hard to make room for anyone else among all those tentacles. Ursula wanted to be the queen of the sea. She tried to overthrow King Triton and wound up with a ship in the gut instead. She also went after Prince Eric as Vanessa when she stole Ariel's voice. This sea witch will stop at nothing to snag a royal man and take all of his power. So what if Prince Eric was tricked into falling for Ursula sometime after The Little Mermaid? That would make Prince Eric Uma's dad. But that doesn't quite seem to fit with Uma's personality and abilities. We think it could be King Triton. We're not sure how, but maybe Uma is the love child of King Triton and Ursula. That would make Ariel and all of her sisters related to Uma. Either King Triton doesn't know that Uma is his daughter, or he's trying to distance himself from the most terrifying sea witch in the ocean. Another possibility for Uma's father is the evil pirate who tried to destroy Peter Pan. That's right, we're talking about Captain Hook. This would make Uma and Harry half-sister and brother. That would explain their chemistry and inseparable bond. Many fans have been shipping these two pretty hard, but what if they turned out to be related? That would be totally gross. After examining all of the villain parents on the aisle, one thing seems quite apparent. None of them seem capable of sustaining a loving relationship. They're all selfish, evil, greedy, vengeful, lying, thieving, power-hungry people who shouldn't be anyone's parents. At the end of the day, that's why the VKs only have one parent each. They couldn't get along with anyone else for long enough to create a loving family. And the parents who stuck around only did so because they wanted to use their kids to do their evil bidding. It's no wonder Mal and the gang wanted to flee lead to Oridon. They had to escape a terrible upbringing with parents who didn't love them. They only thought of themselves. Why do you think the villain kids only have one parent? Do you agree with our theories about who their parents could be? You've got two of the strongest parents in the Disneyverse, Mal, so that makes you, like, a pretty big deal. It's just too bad that your dad jumped ship when you were just a baby. He could have taught you so much about your godly powers. Sure, your mom was no piece of cake, but at least she stuck around, right? The Mistress of Evil and the god of the underworld don't come off as a lovey-dovey couple. But believe us when we say that it was love at first sight. Hades and Maleficent may be divorced, but once upon a time, they saw something special in each other. Keep watching to find out the truth about Hades and Maleficent's love story. But heads up, it doesn't end on a high note. No. No, I left your mother. She's... <laughs> the Big Reveal if there's one thing most VKs have in common, it's having a missing parent. Since the first Descendants film came out in 2015, fans have been curious to find out who Mal, Evie, and Carlos's dads are, and who Jay's mom is too. But it wouldn't be until the third Descendants film that the cat got out of the bag. Despite keeping it a secret from everyone but Evie, Mal finally spilled the beans and revealed that her father was none other than Hades, the god of the underworld. Ben was shocked to say the least, and more than a little terrified. Am I invited to the wedding? Hi, Dad. Uh, uh. After all, Hades would eventually become his father-in-law. Hades did what he had to do. Fans were certain that Hades would turn out to be Mal's dad, and they were right. In Descendants 3, Mal and Celia walk into Hades' lair to steal his ember, but he catches them in the act. Mal calls him dad before they join in on the wicked duet, Do What You Gotta Do. But before they can belt out their emotions, Hades reveals that he was once married to Maleficent. No, I left your mother. She's <laughs> not the easiest person to get along with. Hades then tries to bond with Mal over the fact that they both hate Maleficent. But hate is a pretty strong word, so Mal denies it, saying that she doesn't hate her mom because at least she stuck around. But what we're curious about is what Maleficent did to merit Hades' hatred. After all, he once loved her enough to marry her. But then again, both Hades and Maleficent don't have the best track record. The Big Bad Maleficent Maleficent is said to be the incarnation of pure evil. She takes the small things to heart, like being left out on a guest list. Maleficent is the antagonist of the 1959 Disney movie Sleeping Beauty, and she's known for sentencing King Stefan and Queen Leia's baby girl, Aurora, to die on the eve of her 16th birthday. Luckily for Aurora, Meriwether alters the curse, condemning their kingdom to a lifetime of sleep if the princess should ever prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel. Maleficent has done some awful things, but cursing a baby is by far her evilest deed and it's something she has in common with Hades, the big bad Hades. 
just like Maleficent's story, Hades' story also begins with a christening. His nephews, to be exact, convinced that he should be the one to rule over Mount Olympus instead of his brother Zeus, Hades plans to overthrow him. Problem is, there's a prophecy about Zeus's son, Hercules. Should Hercules ever grow to be 18 years old, he'll be strong enough to beat Hades and the Titans. So what does Hades do? He sends pain and panic to turn Hercules into a mortal and end his life to prevent the prophecy from coming true. Both Hades and Maleficent committed terrible crimes against helpless children, proving that they were a match made in the underworld. Maleficent's Love Story Maleficent hasn't had the easiest run when it comes to love, which is probably why Hades found it hard to be married to her. Long before Hades and Maleficent tied the knot, Captain Hook tried to get Maleficent on board, but she zapped him with her staff until his hook was all that he had left. But in 2014 film Maleficent, we find out that the mistress of evil was once in love with King Stefan, who she had met in the forest of the Moors. Unfortunately for her, the king returned her love by cutting off her wings, sparking the rivalry that led to Princess Aurora's curse. So by the time Hades came along, he had his work cut out for him. Hades Love History Before we tell you exactly how Maleficent and Hades fell in love, let's find out about Hades' romantic past. Long before Hades starred as the villain in Hercules' story, he lived on in Greek mythology. As the story goes, Hades, who hated living in the cold and lonely underworld, kidnapped and married Persephone. He forced her to live with him for a full six months before striking a deal with her and letting her rejoin her family for the rest of the year. Despite being kidnapped, Persephone eventually came to love Hades, but by the time Hercules hit the big screen in 1997, Persephone was nowhere to be found. So as it turns out, Hades has had not one, but two divorces, and he dated someone on the Isle of the Lost after Maleficent too. But more on that later. I'm back! I can't be here. Go away, mother! Love at First Fight both Hades and Maleficent have appeared in a handful of Walt Disney productions, so they met long before the Isle of the Lost was created. In season one of Disney Villains, the series, Maleficent is sent to retrieve one of Chernabog's precious items from Hades. Maleficent obeys her master and goes to the underworld to find the stolen artifact. Hades immediately blasts Maleficent with all his might and is super impressed when he sees that she's still standing. Hades and Maleficent have a love at first sight moment. Halloween with Hades In another Walt Disney series called House of Mouse, Maleficent and Hades come face to face once again. Hey there, hi there, ho there, Miss Maleficent. <laughs> Uh, hey, see, that's a real swell bird you got. But this time, Hades is the only one swooning. After getting rejected by Maleficent a handful of times, Hades goes to Mickey Mouse for some help. So Mickey teaches Hades how to be a nice guy and even dresses him up in a Mickey outfit. But when Hades tries to woo Maleficent in his new outfit, she turns him down, telling him how much she hates nice guys. Hades goes full on Hades when he gets shut down and even threatens to turn Mickey into a roasted mouse. That's when Maleficent finally sees Hades' evil side, and sparks fly. These two definitely had a history before winding up on the Isle of the Lost, so why did their relationship take such a sour turn? The New Hades In October of 2019, Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, hit the big screen, and fans were quick to point out that Connell, the leader of the Dark Fray, is the Maleficent movie's version of Hades. Sure, he and Hades don't look alike or act alike, but they both have a common goal, to free Maleficent of the people she serves. Hades helped Maleficent escape from Chernabog in Disney Villains this series, so there could be a link there. Fans would have loved to see Hades and Maleficent featured in the same live-action Disney film, but that has yet to happen. Now that we know who Hades and Maleficent were before appearing in the Descendants franchise, let's take it way back to when Mal was born. The Villains and a Baby Mao's story begins 20 years after Beast and Fairy Godmother revive and trap the villains on the Isle of the Lost. But at this time, Mal is only 16 years old. So that means that Hades and Maleficent were dating, or married, for a full four years before Mal was born. We know that Hades walked out when Mal was just a baby, so something big had to have happened for Hades to throw in the towel. Hades and Maleficent were definitely in love, and yet, before she could start walking and talking, Mal's parents got a divorce. And Hades wound up hating Maleficent with a passion. So what happened? Let's look at some theories. 
No justice, no revenge. Maleficent, Hades, and the rest of the villains were used to being free and powerful, and being locked up on the Isle meant that they were trapped and powerless. We all saw how enraged Hades was over Beast's decision. He was literally going crazy. There was no justice or revenge to be had. Instead, the villains were trapped like animals and treated as such. Chances are Maleficent's need for revenge became all she could talk about, and seeing as Hades wasn't coming up with any master plans, it's possible that she lost respect for him and started treating him poorly. Hades goes berserk. There's no use denying it, Hades lost his marbles after a few years of living on the Isle. Before getting locked up on the Isle, all Hades had to do was snap his fingers to get what he wanted. But after the Isle, Hades had to do everything with his own two hands, and the same goes for Maleficent. Taking care of a newborn baby as an average human being does isn't an easy task for an all-powerful villain. Chances are Maleficent and Hades had more than a few spats, leading Hades to walk out on his wife and daughter. Powerless There are so many reasons why Hades would hate Maleficent with a passion, but we don't exactly know what went down between them. But what we do know, however, is that Maleficent finds powerful and evil men attractive, and seeing as Hades went from being the god of the underworld to a powerless stay-at-home dad, it sort of makes sense that Maleficent would stop loving him. After getting herself a daughter, she might very well have been the one to break things off with Hades. This would totally explain why Hades hates Maleficent. After all, he obviously has a soft spot for Mal, who he watched grow up from afar. Hades Instead of moping around and trying to win Maleficent back, Hades moved on to someone new. And guess what? In Return to the Isle of the Lost, a Descendants novel, he ended up having another kid by an unknown mother who he named Haiti. Haiti is part of the younger villains in the anti-heroes clue, so it's safe to assume that he was born much after Mal. One of the reasons why Hades and Maleficent never got back together could have everything to do with little Hades' existence. After all, Maleficent isn't one to forgive easily. By the end of Descendants 3, Mal gained both a father and a half-brother, despite him not making an appearance in the film. One big happy family. The question on everyone's lips is will Mal's parents ever get back together? Well, chances are, if Maleficent and Hades attend Mal's royal wedding, they might be reminded of their own and fall in love all over again. But first, Mal would have to find and turn that poor lizard back into the mighty Maleficent again. And who knows how that'll go. Would you like to see Maleficent and Hades in a live-action Disney movie? Sound off in the comments. Maleficent, you're one of the most terrifying Disney villains of all time. But despite the terrors you've unleashed, we can't help but feel sorry for you. We mean, you're still a lizard for crying out loud. All you wanted was for your daughter Mal to bring down the barrier. But things got a little mixed up along the way. But we thought you should know that she succeeded. Too bad the victory is more than a little bittersweet. We hope you don't take it badly if you don't get invited to the royal wedding. Because we all know what happens when your invite gets lost in the mail. She shall prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel. The United States of Aradon and the Isle of the Lost have more connections than you may think. Watch until the end to find out who the parents of your favorite AKs and BKs are. You won't believe how many Disney heroes Mal is related to. No. I don't hate my mother. Dizzy Tremaine the sweet and talented Dizzy Tremaine is one of the most popular VKs for obvious reasons. Unlike her family, Dizzy is kind-hearted and ready to fight for what's right. Dizzy is the daughter of Drizella Tremaine. However, her mother doesn't make an appearance in the Descendants movies. Instead, Dizzy is shown to have been predominantly raised by her grandmother, Lady Tremaine. A popular theory states that Hans from Disney's Frozen is Dizzy's father. And hey, if the shoe fits. But while we're on the topic of shoes, let's take a look at Dizzy's extended family. Dizzy's step-aunt is none other than Cinderella, making Chad charming and Dizzy first cousin through marriage. Dizzy's closest relatives are her six sisters, her aunt Anastasia, and her cousin Anthony Tremaine. King Benjamin Without King Ben, the people of the Isle would still be in prison today. His big heart and forward views changed the kingdom of Ardon for the better. Ben is the only son of power couple Beast and Bell. But despite being raised under the roof and rules, Ben developed life-changing opinions of his own. It's time for forgiveness. 
It's time for a new beginning. Once Ben and Mao get married, Ben will be the son-in-law of the wicked Maleficent and Hades. But Ben's family tree is connected to a handful of other Disney characters. There's a theory that Princess Jane from Tarzan is the descendant of Belle. Both princesses bear a striking resemblance and wear the same colored dress. And since Tarzan is said to be Elsa and Anna's long-lost brother, Ben may be loosely related to the queen and princess of Arendelle. Uma Uma is the villain turned hero who stole our hearts in Descendants 3. She's the only daughter of Ursula the Sea Witch, and she's super proud of her heritage. Uma's father isn't in the picture, but tons of fans are certain that Dr. Fasolier is her long-lost dad. This would make Celia and Uma half-sisters, which would explain their special bond in Descendants 3. When you think about it, Ursula and Dr. Fasolier would make an awesome couple. They both use dark magics, persuasion, and song to con their victims into signing binding contracts that always come with a hefty price. Keep watching to find out how Uma and Mal's family trees could be connected. Celia Fasolier Celia Fasolier was first introduced in Descendants 3. She's the daughter of Dr. Fasolier and is known for being a total daddy's girl. You make sure you get your cut. Although she isn't mentioned in the movies, Celia has an older sister named Freddy Fasolier, who appears in the animated short series Descendants Wicked World. If our assumptions are right, Celia and Freddy are Uma's half sisters. Oddly enough, China and McLean, who plays Uma, used to voice Freddy's character in Wicked World. However, once China was cast as Uma, her role as Freddy was passed down to her real life sister, Lauren McLean. Now, why would the Disney Channel do this if there weren't any? family trees between Uma and the Fasoliers. Carlos Deville The adorable Carlos Deville was born and raised on the Isle of the Lost, but his mother Cruella Deville raised him to be more of a servant than anything. To control him, Cruella convinced Carlos that dogs were ferocious beasts who could not be trusted, when in reality it was Cruella who was the most rabid one of all. Carlos may be an only child, but he has a first cousin named Diego and an uncle named Cecile B. Deville. Diego appears in novels like The Isle of the Lost and Return to the Isle of the Lost, but didn't make it into the Disney Channel movies. Once Carlos marries Jane, he'll be the son-in-law of the wonderful fairy godmother. Jane Jane is an Aradon kid who knows that love will conquer all. She fell for Carlos Deville in Descendants 2 and hasn't looked back since. Would you be my date for Cotillion? Jane is the only daughter of the enchanting fairy godmother. She was raised to always do the right thing, which is what attracted Carlos to Jane in the first place. Jane is super close to Chad Charming for more reasons than one. First of all, fairy godmother and Cinderella see each other as family, which is why we aren't surprised that Chad and Jane have a cousin vibe going on between them. Once Jane and Carlos tie the knot, she'll be the very terrified daughter-in-law of Cruella Deville. Harry Hook there's no one quite like Harry Hook, the only son of Captain Hook from Disney's Peter Pan. Harry aspires to be like his father, going as far as holding the fake Hook to give off the same vibe. Harry may appear to be an only child in the Descendants movies, but the Descendants novels and animated TV series beg to differ. Harry has an older sister named Harriet Hook and a younger sister named CJ Hook. CJ is pictured to have blonde hair in Descendants Wicked World, which makes us wonder who Harry's real mother could be. The only blonde-haired Disney villain out there is Helga Sinclair from Atlantis The Lost Empire. And if you need more proof than that, Helga's last name ties Harry to his Scottish heritage. After all, the name Sinclair derives from a reputable Scottish clan. Evie Evie is the only daughter of the evil queen from Disney's Snow White. She was raised to be vain, calculating, and sophisticated, but managed to lead with her heart instead. We could try to be friends. Put our history behind us and celebrate our differences. At the moment, no one knows who Evie's real father is, but many fans believe that Hades is both Mal and Evie's father. This would make Mal and Evie half-sisters. However, there isn't enough proof to support this theory, which is why Evie's father remains a mystery. But since Queen Grimhild was married to Snow White's father, this would make Evie and Snow White stepsisters. But unlike the evil queen, Evie isn't jealous of her stepsister's good looks because Evie is the fairest of them all. Jay Jay is the only member of the core four to know who his father is instead of his mother. Dad, I already tried. Ah, 
Jay is the only son of Jafar from Disney's Aladdin, but his family tree doesn't end there. A Disney-inspired video game called Nasira's Revenge revealed that Jafar has a fraternal twin sister named Nasira, who also wound up on the Isle of the Lost, and Jay's aunt Nasira has a daughter named Jade, who is close to Jay's age. Although she doesn't appear in the Descendants movies, she was mentioned in the Isle of the Lost book. So despite not knowing who his mother is, Jay still has close female relatives. Relatives. Lonnie Lonnie is an Aradine kid who loves to test boundaries. She's the daughter of Fa Mulan and Li Sheng, and she means business. Just like her mother, Lonnie desires to break the mold and show the world that girls can do anything boys can do. Lonnie is lucky enough to have two supportive parents and a family home in Northern Wei. Her great-grandmother is Grandma Fa, and her grandparents are Fa Zhu and Fa Li. Out of all the AKs and BKs, Lonnie's family appears to be the most normal. Gil If you need a friend, Gil is always there to lend a helping hand. Gil is a simple VK who loves adventure and learning new things. You know what would be fun? To go rafting in a jungle river. Find a lost civilization. Oh, or maybe a penguin. He's the son of Gaston from Disney's Beauty and the Beast, but he's nothing like his father. Gaston had three children, Gaston Jr., Gaston III, and Gil. But Gaston's sons have never mentioned who their mother is. But in this case, we think it's much better to ask who their mothers are. The Bim Bets from Beauty and the Beast were head over heels for Gaston. And since there's three of them, it's possible that Gaston had a son with each of them. Claudette, Laurette, and Paulette weren't the sharpest tools in the shed, which could be why Gil isn't always quick to get the joke. Princess Audrey Unlike many other Disney princesses, Audrey is royal on both sides of the family. Her mother, Princess Aurora, is the daughter of King Stefan and Queen Leia, whereas her father, Prince Philip, is the son of King Hubert and his unnamed wife. Audrey's parents didn't play huge roles in the Descendants movies, but her grandmother, Queen Leia, sure did. Despite being born into a loving household, Audrey turned out to be a brat. But by the end of Descendants 3, she really came full circle. Audrey also has a cousin named Ari. Ariana Rose, who was introduced in The Escape from the Isle of the Lost, a Descendants novel. Despite being cousins, Audrey and Ariana Rose don't really get along. Chad Charming Chad Charming is the son of Cinderella and Prince Charming, but his status just isn't good enough for Audrey. Despite being raised by the caring and hardworking Cinderella, Chad is nothing like his mom. Chad wants nothing more than to make Audrey happy. First off, great new one. So he agrees that the VKs belong on the Isle and nowhere else. But unlike Audrey, Chad has a huge extended family on the Isle of the Lost. His mother's stepsisters, Drizella and Anastasia, have families of their own. This makes Chad step cousins with Dizzy, her six sisters, and Anthony Tremaine. We wonder if Chad will warm up to his extended family now that the barrier has been taken down. Doug Doug is one of the sweetest Ardine kids of all time, which makes him compatible with the fashion-forward Eve. Dove is the son of Dopey from Disney's Snow White, and he was raised to help those in need. The name of Doug's mother is never mentioned throughout the films, but we do see Dopey standing next to a beautiful woman at Ben's coronation, and she's believed to be Doug's mother. Despite coming off as an only child, Doug has a handful of brothers. Mal the future queen of Aradon has got one complicated family tree. She's the daughter of Maleficent and Hades, who are some of the most powerful Disney villains of all time. Hades is the brother of Zeus and Poseidon, which makes Mal first cousins with Hercules. And since King Triton is the son of Poseidon, Mal's also cousins with Princess Ariel. Mal has a half-brother called Hades, who is strictly introduced in Return to the Isle of the Lost, a Descendants novel. If you're wondering how Uma and Mal might be related, it's through King Triton and Ursula. Disney executives originally wanted to make Ursula Ariel's aunt, but they chose to leave it out of the script. Still, Ursula hints to having lived in the castle with King Triton, causing fans to peg them as siblings. So Mal could be connected to Uma through her father's godly roots. Who is your favorite Descendants character and why?
Welcome back, Descendants fans. Want to learn why Evie starts out being obsessed with looks and finding a prince? Dive into her fascinating backstory with us, where we speculate on who her father could be. Keep watching to discover which friend she used to crush on and which friend used to be her enemy. Does this vest make me look fat? All about Evie. Let's start out with a quick character appraisal of Evie and the journey she goes on in the first two Descendants movies. We first meet Evie on the aisle, being wicked with the rest of the VKs. It's not surprising she's so obsessed with mirrors and looks, given that she's the daughter of the evil queen from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. But more on Mommy Dearest later. Evie is all about finding a prince when she gets to Auradon, and she lines up Chad Charming as the perfect person to get her a castle. But she discovers that there's more to a partner than being next in line to the throne, especially when Chad uses her to do his homework, then tries to get her expelled. Evie's journey of self-discovery. Dopey's son, Doug, helps Evie realize that she doesn't have to play dumb to get a guy. She's actually really smart with an aptitude for chemistry. After she gets a B plus in her chemistry exam, she has the revelation that she's more than just a pretty face. She also has an aptitude for business too. When she sets up her Evie's for Hearts fashion line, she understands the benefits of work, and as Doug points out, in the next three years, she'll be able to buy her own castle. That way she won't need a prince, and Evie agrees because she has him. Talk about a turnaround! Unlike her BFF Mal, Evie is obviously excited about being at Oridon Prep. We love the look on her face when she sees her dorm room, and by Descendants 2, she's encouraging Mal to embrace the opportunity they've been given. Evie knows that Oridon girls can be whatever they want to be, and she knows she's lucky enough to have been given a chance which is why she wants to extend that chance to other kids from the aisle. At the end of the second film, she asks Ben to bring Dizzy over and a whole list of other kids. She doesn't forget where she's come from, though. We're always going to be the kids from the aisle. That's their roots, and what they had to do to survive back then has made them who they are. Sure, they're never going to be like anyone else in Oridon, but that's okay. Evie's made peace with it, but what exactly happened in Evie's childhood? So? Uh so have you not read the rule book? Mommy Dearest We can't discuss Evie's backstory without looking into her relationship with her mother. The Evil Queen is the driving force behind Evie's values at the beginning of the first Descendants movie. Although the Evil Queen seems like the nicest out of the VK parents, we can't forget that she's a villain, and she can be pretty intimidating and scary when she wants to be. As Evie says, her mother's not a barrel of laughs when she doesn't get her way, and Evie admits to Mal that she's sometimes afraid of her mom. The Evil Queen tells Evie to find herself a prince who owns a big castle with a mother-in-law wing. The Evil Queen is obsessed with looks and tells Evie not to laugh because it causes wrinkles. She also wants to get rid of Evie's unibrow before she lets her go to Oridon. Talk about giving the girl a complex about her looks. Although she's proud of Evie, she's still all about herself. When they ask the magic mirror who is the fairest of them all, Evie quickly changes her answer from herself to her mother. The Evil Queen has equipped Evie with the kind of skills she thinks are most important, like applying cosmetics. When Evie does as Mal's makeup for the date with Ben, she reveals that her mom taught her how to apply blush before she could talk. We also learn about the rest of Evie's education in Melissa de la Cruz's prequel novel, Isle of the Lost. Let's dive right in. Evie's Childhood We discover more about Evie's upbringing in the prequel novel, and it's full of so many fascinating facts about Evie's childhood, like which friend she developed a crush on and which friend she was actually enemies with throughout her younger years. So hang tight, because we'll be revealing those jaw-dropping revelations relations real soon. Let's start with what life was like growing up on the Isle. In the novel, we learn that the nickname for the Isle of the Lost is the Isle of the Leftovers. That's because it's the dumping ground for Oridon's trash. All of the food, makeup, and clothing sold there are leftovers. The book's author says that life there is dark and dreary and very sad too, because there's no magic. The villains have been reduced to hard scrabble lives. They used to do everything with magic, and now they don't know how to do anything. However, that wasn't the case for Evie. If you're wondering what Evie was like as a little kid, let us fill you in. In the novel, we learn that all the villains loved her. Her laugh could make the tiger from the Jungle Book, Shere Khan, purr contently. It could make the wicked stepmother from Cinderella, Lady Tremaine, 
smile. Captain Hook from Peter Pan even braved sticking his head in TikTok the crocodile's mouth just to make Evie laugh. But after a run-in with another villain mom and daughter duo at Evie's sixth birthday party, the evil queen and Evie were banished. They moved to a rundown castle far across the forest, where Evie is castle-schooled. We can guess that her mom didn't teach her academic subjects, given what Evie says to Chad and the descendants. Playing down her brain, she insists that she's not that smart. She says that she is, however, really good at cooking and sewing and cleaning, just like Chad's mother, Cinderella. That marks her out from the other villains. We can totally picture the evil queen teaching Evie all of those skills to make her an appealing wife to a prince. But 10 years later, Evie's off to school, and we don't mean Oridon Prep. What does ice cream taste like? It's cold and it's sweet. And if you eat it too fast, it gives you a headache. School time on the Isle. The children on the Isle of the Lost attend Dragon Hall to learn how to be better villains. Mother Gothel from Tangled teaches Selfishness 101. She's one of the villains who's revived and imprisoned on the Isle. Unsurprisingly, Evie passes with flying colors. Other classes include weird science, unnatural biology, wickedness, and evil schemes and nasty plots. Evie is enrolled in Advanced Vanities class too. No surprise there either. The villain from Beauty and the Beast, Gaston's twin sons, are also enrolled in that class. We'll get back to Gaston later as he potentially has an important role to play in Evie's life. With all of these kinds of wicked lessons being taught, it's no wonder Evie turned out the way she did. But what about friends? Who did Evie first team up with before they became the core band of four VKs? If you think it's Mal, you're mistaken. Evie's surprising crush. We see Evie crushing on Chad Charming at the beginning of the Descendants movie, primarily because of his prince status. And then she finds finds true love with Doug. But she had a different love interest when she lived on the Isle, and that was her first friend at Dragon Hall. Can you guess who it is? We'll put you out of your suspense and announce that it's… Carlos. Carlos hosts a party at home when Cruella de Vil is away, and Evie ends up trapped in a closet along with Cruella's bear traps. We'll reveal who set up that mean trick next. But Carlos saves Evie and it brings them closer together. Evie discovers that Carlos lives in that closet, and they bond over their shared experience of isolation. Their friendship is solidified when Evie shows Carlos kindness. It's thought that these two had a mutual crush on each other, but nothing ever happened. They stay good friends and Evie helps Carlos with his club inventions, like the device he creates to poke a hole in the dome over the aisle. He hopes to access other TV channels and he's successful in creating a hole for a minute before it heals right up, but not before it lets enough magic in to revive Maleficent's scepter and her sidekick Diablo. Evie and Carlos get roped into a quest to retrieve the scepter. And that leads us onto the topic of Evie's early enemy, who is… Evie's shocking enemy. Believe it or not, BFFs Evie and Mal were actually enemies for most of their lives on the aisle, and it all goes back to Evie's lavish sixth birthday party. The evil queen invited everyone except Mal, and anyone who's seen Sleeping Beauty will know that Maleficent does not respond well to being left off a guest list. She banishes the evil queen and Evie to a faraway castle, and Mal holds a grudge against Evie that she's still holding on to when Evie shows up at Dragon Hall 10 years later. In her evil schemes class, Mal comes up with her revenge plan. She tricks Evie into walking into Corella's closet, hoping that she'll be seriously harmed by the bear traps Cruella uses to protect her fur coats. Thank goodness Carlos came to the rescue. Mal forces Evie to accompany her on her quest to recover Maleficent's scepter. Mal plans to make Evie grab it as Maleficent has warned her that it will curse whoever touches it, causing them to fall asleep for a thousand years. With Jay and Carlos in tow, the gang of four VKs bond on their dangerous mission through the Isle of the Doomed and the Forbidden Mountain. They have to beat various traps that relate to their biggest fears. We learn that Evie's biggest fear is to end up not being the fairest in the land. That says a lot about the impact her mom had on her. Evie explains to Mal why the evil queen didn't invite Mal to her sixth birthday party. She was bitter that the villains chose Maleficent to lead them. She thought it should have been her, given that she's royalty. Those villain parents cause all the trouble, right? Fortunately, Mal shows the goodness in her heart and sacrifices herself by grabbing Maleficent's scepter. It turns out that Mal can't be cursed by it because of the bloodline. So Mal and Evie make amends and become firm friends. Dad?
The Daddy Question We're finishing up with a look at who Evie's father could be. We know Descendants 3 is going to deal with the question of Mal's dad, so could it also reveal Evie's parentage? There are a few fascinating fan theories about who it could be. The first four candidates all come from the Evil Queen's original movie, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Given that she was married to Snow White's dad, King Leopold, could he be Evie's father too? That would make Evie and Snow White half-sisters. The Evil Queen also had a henchman, the Huntsman, whom she tasked with getting rid of her stepdaughter. Of course, he doesn't go through with her evil plan, but could his part in the plot have gotten him imprisoned on the Isle too? Then there's the magic mirror. Perhaps that was turned into human form on the Isle. The fourth candidate is Grumpy the Dwarf. Out of all the seven dwarfs, he'd be the one most likely to end up on the Isle. Perhaps that connection explains why Evie's attracted to Doug. Finally, and most intriguingly of all, there's Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. He's as obsessed with looks as the evil queen so perhaps they bonded over their fascination with who's the fairest of them all. Gaston's fate after he fell from the castle was left open. Even if he did perish, we know from the prequel book that villains were resurrected and imprisoned on the Isle, and we know that Gaston's three sons live on the Isle. We meet Gil in Descendants 2 as part of Uma's pirate gang, and we meet the twins, Gaston Jr. and Gaston III, in the prequel novel. If these two are Evie's half-brothers, that would actually be pretty sweet because in the book, they delight Evie by wrestling and balancing on top of each other at her birthday party. Then they're reunited 10 years later when Evie first arrives at Dragon Hall. The twins help her find Dr. Fasslier's office, fighting over who gets to open the door for her. They also offer to share their lunch with Evie and take her on a tour of the school. Could they have had a sixth sense that they were related? Who do you think is Evie's father, and what do you make of her secret history with Mal and Carlos? Be sure to let us know in the comments section below. Descendants 3 is coming back this summer, and we can't wait to see Mal and the gang again. Today, we're taking a look at Mal's backstory. Stay tuned to find out how one of her enemies became her BFF. She might want you to believe she's rotten to the core, but Mal is everyone's favorite VK turned hero. The purple-haired daughter of Maleficent basically ruled the Isle of the Lost. She was mean and tough, and you can slap a pirate hat on, but you're still shrimpy. <laughs> and no one dared to cross her. She had a hard time adjusting when she was selected to move to Aradon. She pretended that she was good while she schemed with her BFFs, but Mal is anything but evil. She's kind and fights for fairness. She's stylish and cool. She's also a great friend and girlfriend, but there's a lot more to Mal than just what you see in the Descendants movies. Thanks to the novels and other sources of canon, we know a lot about Mal's backstory. We're going to take a look at all of these details so you can know everything there is to know about Mal. We're so excited to learn even more about her in the third movie. Mommy Issues We can't talk about Mal's backstory without talking about her mommy issues. Seriously, Maleficent is basically mommy dearest. She's just not a good mom. It's all about you and me, baby. Do you enjoy watching innocent people suffer? Here's what we know about Maleficent. She had a baby with some unknown character that she describes as a weak human. More on that later. Maleficent is the worst of the worst villains. She's a powerful magic fairy with the ability to turn into a dragon. Everyone is scared of her, even the other villains. Maleficent was the most powerful villain who was banned by King Adam to the Isle of the Lost. Most of her power comes from a magical scepter. She also had a magical spell book. In the Descendants books, Maleficent has a magical bird. Maleficent always puts herself above everyone else, including her daughter. She also has her daughter do all her dirty work. In the prequel novel, Isle of the Lost, she makes Mal go after her magical scepter, even though whoever touches it will end up cursed. In the first movie, she forces Mal to steal the fairy godmother's wand, which is kept in a museum so that Mal can bring magic back to the island. Then she sends a monster after Mal and her friends because she doesn't trust her. She tries to teach Mal to be as evil as possible. When we first meet Mal, she wants nothing more than just to be like her mom. She wants her mom's approval. She tries her best to be as evil as possible. In Isle of the Lost, we learn that Mal was not invited to a birthday party at age 6. We'll tell you all about whose birthday it was in a few minutes. Well, Maleficent was super offended on behalf of Mal. She causes a ton of drama with the other villain parents. What is it with 
with Maleficent getting so offended by party invitations. Seriously, it was not getting invited to Princess Aurora's christening that led to all the drama in Sleeping Beauty. Nothing Mal ever does is good enough for Maleficent. She's not an affectionate mother and Mal isn't quite sure whether her mom even loves her. Eventually, Mal learns that it's okay to step away from a toxic parent. Even though Maleficent is her mother, she's a terrible influence. Mal learns about love and acceptance from her friends and they become her chosen family. Maleficent ends up cursed as a lizard that Mal keeps in her dorm. Maybe she'll learn some valuable parenting lessons while she's trapped as a reptile. We sure hope so. Mal's BFFs when we first meet Mal in Descendants, she's the ringleader of a tough group of BKs. Her best friends are Evie, Jay, and Carlos. They're the fiercest gang on the Isle of the Lost. They're also the first BKs chosen to attend Auradon Prep. You four have been chosen to go to a different school in Auradon. All of them are excited to get off the Isle, but they have a hard time getting rid of their evil ways. Eventually, they all find their home and they find family in each other. But have you ever wondered how they ended up as friends? Evie is the brilliant and stylish stylish daughter of the evil queen from Snow White. Everyone thinks she's ditzy because she's so into fashion, but it turns out that she's actually really smart. We love that Evie proves you can be both girly and intelligent. According to the books, Evie and Mal were originally enemies. When Evie was six years old, she and her mom did not invite Mal to her birthday party. Maleficent was cruel and so was Mal. Who can blame her for not inviting a party pooper? Maleficent goes crazy on the evil queen and Mal is super impressed by how fierce her mom is. Mal holds a grudge against Evie for years. As teenagers, she tries to trap Evie at a party in revenge. When Maleficent makes Mal go after her scepter, she recruits Evie. She was going to make Evie touch the scepter, which would make her fall asleep for a thousand years. While they're on this journey, Mal realizes Evie is actually an amazing friend. She doesn't curse her, and they become besties. Evie always accepts Mal without judgment. By the time they go to Auradon Prep, they're like sisters. Mal's two other best friends are Jay and Carlos. Jay is the son of Jafar. He's a thief. He was really Mal's first friend on the aisle, and they make a game of stealing. He has to steal stuff for his dad to sell at his shop. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Jafar used to be so powerful. Jay ends up becoming a star athlete at Aradon Prep. Carlos is the son of Cruella de Vil. Cruella forces her son to sleep in her dressing room because she loves her furs more than him. She also convinces him that all dogs are evil. Mal originally fakes a friendship with Carlos so that he'll throw a party while his mother is away. Mal wants to trap Evie with bear traps as revenge, but Carlos feels bad about it and saves Evie. He goes with them to get the scepter because he's invented a device that seeks out magic. It was communicating with the scepter. At Auradon Prep, Carlos gets a lot more confident. He also ends up becoming the world's biggest dog lover. Mal's Love Life If you saw Descendants 2, you probably saw some serious chemistry between Mal and Harry Hook. Hi, Harry. Just wait until Emma gives your back. In the first novel, Harry is not a character at all, but he's introduced later as the middle child. In the movies, there's definitely some hinting that Mal and Harry have a past together. And if you ask the actors, they'll tell you it's true. Dove Cameron and Thomas Doherty came up with a backstory for their characters. They said that they dated, which is why they have such chemistry. But according to the novels, this never actually happened, and it's never directly mentioned in the movies, so it is not canon. But Dove and Thomas probably came up with this because they were crushing on each other. They're dating in real life, you know. But according to the junior novelization of the second movie, Harry has another love interest. He kisses Gil. In the books, Mal says she doesn't know what love feels like, and she says that no one really dates on the island. But when she comes to Auradon, she catches the eye of one handsome prince. Ben, who later becomes king, is totally enamored by the rebel. He sees good in her from the beginning. It's because of Ben that the VKs get a chance to come to Auradon in the first place. Mal tries to trick him with a love potion as part of her scheme. But on their first date, he falls into the lake. Mal thinks he's drowning and tries to save him, even though she cannot swim. He realizes that she's a really good person and he falls for her even though the love potion is worn off. He lets her think that he's still under the spell. In the second movie, he finds out that she's been using magic. She runs back to the Isle of the Lost, but he goes after her with the help of Evie, Jay, and Carlos. Mal has to save him from Uma. Later, Uma shows up at the Cotillion. She has been under a love spell. Mal kisses Ben 
time using True Love's kiss to break the spell. She reveals that she has been in love with him for a long time. These two are seriously couple goals. They always see the best in each other, and they encourage each other to be better. Plus, they have overcome a lot. We can't wait to see more of their relationship in the next movie. Mal's Enemies as a VK, Mal has several enemies. Of course, Mal's biggest enemy is actually herself. She's constantly fighting against her upbringing as a villain because deep down, she's actually a good person. Wow. <laughs> you almost don't notice your other features anymore. <laughs> then Mal has to deal with her mom. In the first movie, one of Mal's main enemies is Audrey. When Mal and the other VKs first arrive at Oridon Prep, Audrey is dating Ben. Audrey is a classic mean girl. She tries really hard to sabotage Mal's life in Oridon. Audrey is not in the second movie, but we know she'll be back in the third movie and she looks like a villain. In the second movie, Mal faces an old enemy. Uma is the daughter of Ursula. She's a pirate. Now that Mal has left the island, Uma is basically the VK in charge. Everyone is scared of her. She has Harry Hook and Gil to do her bidding. But Uma and Mal weren't always enemies. They used to be friends. They used to team up to play pranks on people when they were kids. According to Isle of the Lost, they tried to prank Cruella de Vil, but Mal falls off the docks. Uma tries to save her, but it was a joke all along. Mal dumps a bucket of shrimp on Uma's head. She meant it to be funny, but Uma didn't think so. No matter how much Uma washed her hair, she could never get the fishy smell out. Then Mal got everyone to call Uma shrimpy. They became sworn enemies after that. In the second movie, Uma feels left behind by Mal and the other VKs. She's super jealous. She kidnaps Ben so that Mal will give her fairy godmother's wand, but Mal gives her a fake. Then Uma shows up at Cotillion. She puts Ben under the love spell, and once the spell breaks, Mal and Uma have an epic showdown. Uma turns into an octopus-like sea witch, just like her mom. Mal also transforms into a creature. Uma swims away, but we know we haven't heard the last of her. Mal's powers that leads us to one of the most important things about Mal, her powers. When she has her fight with Uma, Mal gets so angry that she turns into a dragon. She gets this power from her mom, but instead of using it for evil, she uses it to protect her loved ones. Also like her mom, Mal's eyes glow green when she gets angry. It's a good reminder that Mal isn't fully human. She might not be human at all, actually. Dove Cameron has described her as a pixie. Technically, Maleficent is an evil fairy. Mal inherits her mom's magical abilities. She is able to cast spells with the help of the spell book. Beware, forswear, undo Jane's hair. She's also very successful at making potions. Mel also has some powers that aren't magical. For one, she's really talented artist. In the first movie, we see her spray painting graffiti. She draws a lot throughout the film. Mel is also really good with a sword. She had to learn that growing up on the Isle of the Lost. Mel has some pretty cool abilities, but it's definitely her awesome heart that makes her such a great character. Who is Mel's dad? There's been a lot of speculation about Mal's dad. Who is he? We know that we're going to see him in Descendants 3. He was originally described as a weak human by Maleficent, but it turns out that Mal's dad is most likely Hades, the god of the underworld from Hercules. But Hades is not human. You know, I know, I got it. I got the concept. We have so many questions. Did Maleficent lie about who Mal's father is so she wouldn't ask too many questions? That seems like something Maleficent would do. Or did Hades trick Maleficent into believing he was human? Villains are pretty sneaky, you know. We cannot wait to find out more about Mal's father. What's your favorite thing about Mal? Let us know in the comments below. And that's it for Mal's backstory. Be sure to subscribe to The Things to keep up with Descendants 3 news. See you next time.